You're listening to Mystic Lounge with Alan B. Smith. Rebroadcast on the Onyx Network. Thursdays at 11 p.m. Pacific. Fridays at 2 a.m. Eastern. Wherever you are and whenever you are, welcome, good souls, to Mystic Lounge. I'm Alan B. Smith, your most grateful host. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Tonight is the last episode of the year 2022, and we have a very, very special guest to put a bow on this year. And she is Julia Cannon, author of Soul Speak, The Language of Your Body. So we'll be talking about that with Julia in just a moment. And so an update for next year, 2023. A couple of things. I am looking forward to hopefully some some more good news regarding Half-Light, the documentary. So I'll, I'll uh, bring that up either on social media if something pops up before the next show, or I'll be sure to remind you during the next cast. Now, the next podcast will probably be uh, mid-January. And then for January, February, and March, I'm going to be cutting back quite a bit on shows, including the Mystic Lounge podcast and the Coffee and UFOs podcast. Because again, (laughs) because I can't help it, I'm working on another project. This project is different than Half Light, um, but I can't tell you exactly what it is yet, because in the event that it changes its form, I don't want to over promise, but it's something I'm really exciting about, excited about. And it's a deep dive um, for me into ufology. So as the year goes on, I'll be sure to update you on that. So the next three months, uh, please keep your eye out for the shows. Click the notification bell on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash mystic lounge. So you don't miss those shows that do pop up um, over January, February, and March. And then after those first few months, once I've had a chance to really dig into uh, my research, then I'll go back to regular podcasting. Um, and all of those episodes will be rebroadcast on the UnX network. Now, let us celebrate one more thing about this year, and that was bringing on uh, uh, Alien Coffee Bean Coffee to this program. So I'm very grateful to them. And if you are as much of a fanatic for coffee as I am, and especially to get through the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, please go to aliencoffeebean.com and use the 20% discount code for Mystic Lounge. And that is mystery20, shipping in the US only. And now let's welcome our guest, Julia Cannon. Hey, Julia, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Alan? I'm great. Thank you so much for being on here. I'm I'm, oh I'm really God. honored. My my honor. Thank you so much for asking. And hey, I'm really excited about your project. I wish I could know more. I know. I wish I could. I wish I could tell more. But I'm sure you know when you go down certain routes, um, it could take twice as long as you think it's going to take. Yes. Um, and it, you know they don't always turn out um, as you intend, which is sometimes you know actually a really good thing. That's the um, fun thing. They just take on the life of their own and go wherever they're going to go. And you just get to follow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so let's 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 learn a little bit about uh, Julia before we get started. Julia Cannon was born in Hutchinson, Kansas, to Johnny and Dolores Cannon. Many of you who know Dolores. Uh, Johnny was a career Navy man, so they moved frequently, and she had the advantage of an open-minded upbringing. She was raised with the understanding that psychic phenomena and metaphysics were commonplace, and she was always exploring new avenues of growth, which is exactly what we do here <laughs> on Mystic Lounge, Julia. Uh, Julia, Can- yeah. <laughs> Julia Cannon became a registered nurse and worked in intensive care and home health for the duration of her 20 plus year career. She then decided to explore other aspects of the healing profession and has trained, uh, trained in reconnective healing and Dolores Cannon's QHHT. Her energy healing has taken on its own dimensions and has formed into something called uh, light casting. Intuitive lights come from the hands to direct energy where it is needed to balance any deficiencies in the body. And I'll leave it right there. Um, And so, Dolores, can you tell us a little bit more about about your work? (laughs) Uh, I think you mean Julia. You have no idea how often that happens. Did I just say Dolores? Yes. (laughs) Oh, 
<laughs> and I, I actually thought in advance that I did not want to make that mistake. No problem. It happens a lot. It, it's yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, I guess it's an honor, right? <laughs> it so, is. It yeah. is. <laughs> Just um, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but I'd love to hear more about your work from your point of view. I mean, I can you know read the descriptives and all mm -hmm. that, but um, what, what was your journey with with your light work? With my life. <laughs> Uh, with your light work <laughs> with my light work okay the light, light. Or, or your life we can start wherever you want to start like, oh, yeah. life? oh my goodness that's all <laughs> that was gonna be a short show <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but with the um, light no that was something really cool um because it was part of my natural development um mm -hmm. you know as we do we go on in these courses and and we we just move along and um, and this was something that just happened spontaneously. I had gone through a really, really rough time in my life. And, um, and then somebody introduced me cause it was like my, my nursing career. I mean, it was like, everything was shut off. I was, it was all leaving and I was being directed into a new direction. Didn't know what was going on. I'm, it was kicking and screaming and flailing and like, ah, you know, <laughs> uh, if anybody, if you're aware of that, you know, sometimes you're pulled in another direction and yeah. And well, what, what was going on that was making it so crazy? Well, um, it was pretty, pretty big. <laughs> it's not something okay. I, gotcha. it's not, okay. it's not so much what happened. It's that, mm -hmm. that we all have things that happen and it's like, what mm -hmm. do you do with it? And that's what I like mm -hmm. to, cause we all have, it was it was a pretty severe thing. Um, was it, it was an, one that just kind of or was it? Yeah, was it internal oh. or was it something external happening to you? It was external, but it caused okay. internal. <laughs> so it, as you it know, does, right? Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, you know, when your whole outer world is changing, you're you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? My whole world as I knew it um, from like probably four years old, as far back as I can remember. I was going to be a nurse and I knew that I knew that was my path. I had this whole thing charted out. And, um, and so, and I did all that and, and then it was the universe was saying, okay, it's time to leave. You've got to go over here. You need to be doing something else. I'm like, but why? Well, I, I'm quite comfortable here. Um, when I look back, I can see that I wasn't happy there anymore. I could see it was done. The chapter was closed, but I wasn't willing to, acknowledge it whatever and the universe is like time to go time to go time to go yeah. and i kept getting these messages to go and i would start doing a little bit start doing a little motion you can see i was getting the message but i do a little bit i'd get uncomfortable and then mm -hmm. i'd go back to my comfort zone again i got about four of these messages over the course of two years and on the fourth one Cause I was always just like, why, why? I don't get it. I don't understand. I, you know, it just, none of it made sense. And they kept getting a little bit more explicit. You know, at first it was like, do a healing center. You need to do a healing center. So I created um, a fitness center, a health spa and fitness center. I'm like, that was my version in my head of a healing yeah. center. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I did that and it was like, okay. But then I kept getting the messages like, okay, that wasn't it apparently. <laughs> so okay. Anyway, so I, I, that happened. And on the fourth time mm -hmm. I said something different. I didn't, I did, I, I said the why, but then I said, how, how on earth would I do that? I'm, Cause this time they said, you need to do a healing center in Arkansas. That was the first time Arkansas was said. I lived in Missouri at the time and I'm like, why am I going to do it? That doesn't make sense. Again, I'm doing why, 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 you know, we debate and, and argue with our spirit guides and our, everything. And what well, is that? Is that what they are? Spirit, spirit guides. Those were the messages. Mm -hmm. They were coming mm -hmm. from guidance. You know, at that time okay. I didn't really understand what it was. I just knew I was getting guidance. I knew I was Understood. getting urges and pushes and, and I was getting messages, but I didn't know how to define it. It was just that, I'm, something's happening here. And okay. I, it was enough. I, I heard it enough where I could, I could argue with it. <laughs> Why <laughs> debate it? Um, Interesting. Mm -hmm. So anyway, on that time they were like, um, you know, they said do a healing center in Arkansas. And I'm like, that doesn't yeah. make any sense. I don't understand. And then I was like, how, how on earth would I do that? And it was like, and that how is a really powerful question because that's when the, it, it was as if they said, well, we'll show you how. <laughs> And, <laughs> and you said, and how are you going to show me how? <laughs> no, I just went, yeah. you know, it was, it was as if they said that because all of a sudden everything I knew 
was shut off. It was my world completely ceased to exist as I knew it. And I was plucked out of that world and I was put in Arkansas. <laughs> it was just like. So major, major transition. Major, major, um, major, major. And like I said, I went kicking and screaming. I didn't understand, even though I look back and I see, oh, okay, I got messages. I asked how I did all these things. And so, yeah, I, I got what I was asking for. I mean, it just, it just went that route, but um, okay. it was all fine. It, it took me quite a few years before I started settling in. So if anybody's going through something like that, just understand mm -hmm. You made this plan. This was guided by you before you ever came in. You knew what you wanted to do and you made a course. And what I, what I understand now is I had a course of plan, a planned mm -hmm. course here. And I was probably at this point, I needed to go this way. And it's like, I just kept going, Hey, I'm going this way. And they're like, no, that's the wrong way. You got to be over here now. And so that was my guidance team was going, Hey, Hey, so Hey, it, you know, I can only go so long before I had to be over there. And is it specific it or are those like just general points in our course that we're, we're supposed to hit? I think there, I think, I think there are specific points. They gave me a drawing that I do in some of the, my talks and some of the classes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like we have a maze that we've come into. It's like, as if it's a maze, we got to come in and we're going to go out and it's we're going maze. in and around everything. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, we have certain things that we want to accomplish when we mm -hmm. come here. It's like a blueprint. And so we're going through there and it's like, okay, so those points are essentially, we could call them faded, whatever. I don't know, but it's like, they are points that we, we contracted with others. You know, we, we made agreements. We said, this is I, this, I must be here at this point in this time. I want this to happen. And then everything else that happens on the way, we can we have experiences, you know, we're just, you know, going through things. So as soon as we get caught up in those experiences and we kind of get off over here and then, mm -hmm higher self guidance team, whatever's going, um, hello, you had a plan, you know, well, it's time yeah. to go over here back on Is, your own. <laughs> I mean, I think we all have moments like that where we go, Whoa, how did I get here? Exactly. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to steer the ship in a different direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and it was, it was, yeah. And at that time you feel like I felt like I was totally out of control because I didn't understand it then. And that's where mm -hmm. I feel like, I, I hope that uh, my story helps people because if if you're in the middle of it, yeah, it's chaotic. It's scary. Well, it's, um, what was most helpful for you getting out of that? Um, my mother was very, very helpful. She was working okay. like, you know, she was working on different books and she was getting her information from sessions and things like that. And she was like, um, and when everything was stripped away from me, I mean, I was just, it was gone. I was just plucked out of here. My life was gone. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she was working on some information. It said, uh, if you, if that happens to you, um, then it's indicating like you needed to understand it. Like when everything is gone, you still have you. And it was like, it's important to know that no matter how much all of this material world is, it doesn't matter. And then that's when it's stripped away. It's to show you that. It, it's only there for you to whatever to use and things. But when it all comes down to it, the most important thing is you and you always have you. You will never lose you because at that time when you're in the middle of losing everything, it feels like that's what's so scary. It's like I'm gone that you just like my whole identity has gone. Everything's gone. But they're like, no, it's not really because you're still here. Well, you know, this is the the Christmas season, and um, you know, thinking about you know the words of like Jesus Christ, right? That, mm -hmm. that the kingdom of God lives within you, Absolutely. and and so it's it's that same idea that um, ultimately everything you need starts with you. Yeah. So you can always kind of well, it's easy to say, but you know, generally you can rebuild. So when, you know when you yes. when you when the world starts kind of falling apart around you. Mm -hmm. Um, or you start falling apart on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, cause I, I've been through that and, <laughs> and, and that's a very lonely place mm. as, as well. Um, but you know, I bet it's the same situation. It's you, cause you've got to get back down to the bare basics and then you do build back up. It's like you're rebuilding everything about you mm -hmm. to go in a different direction. Yeah. So it's probably the same thing. It's either the world or you, I mean, I rebuilt me too in there. So yeah. And you've learned, well, and you've learned a healing 
techniques mm -hmm. uh, since then. This is something I'm not very familiar with. So could you enlighten me as well yeah. uh, as everyone well, listening? Well, like when that happened, you know, cause I was a registered nurse and that was my identity. And this was just, what am I now? Mm -hmm. Who am I? I don't know. And somebody yeah. talked yeah. talk to me and they said, you know, um, when, when this, when you were younger, said, first she said, you have to understand you're a healer. And I'm like, what's a healer? I don't, that was a strange term to me because we're talking about, when was this? Um, early nineties. Okay. That wasn't a prevalent word back then. Um, mm -hmm. And I hadn't been exposed to it. And she's like, you're a healer. You came from a healing lineage. Um, you're not aware of it, but now it's time to come in. When you were younger, the only thing that translated into healer in that world was doctors and nurses. That was it. So that's why you chose the path. That's you true. I knew from tiny, I'm going to be a nurse. And it's like you were going down that healing path. That's what made sense to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this healing. I'm going to help people. Right. Now here, it's like, okay, shift. That's not necessary. I finished that one. Now it's go. And now you're going to find these innate abilities. We all have these. We, right. Every single one of us have different abilities you know, that, that are each our own. Nobody's more special than anybody else. We all have these things. Um, and in my case, it was like, you have, you know, you have healing abilities, but really what it is, you're helping others to heal themselves. There's nobody healing you. And when, and so if anybody says I'm a healer and I'm going to heal you, beware. Okay. Right. Well, what about, what about Reiki then? You're what healing yourself and, and you, yeah. Mm hmm yeah, it's energy work. All of these are energy work. They're working within your energy field so that you can take what you need to utilize. Okay. You may not be aware of your, your cooperation in there, but you are. They aren't doing okay. anything to you. They are using, um, and that's what I started noticing when I was doing energy work is I would have my hands there and I could feel it was like as if there were beings behind me working through my hands mm -hmm. and doing it. it was like it was I was just being a vessel that they were working through, utilizing me. And they were just kind of moving my hands around, showing you know they were moving the energy. See, it wasn't me. And that's why people need to understand it's not you. It's you are acting as a vehicle for this energy to work through to help somebody else. So it's you and it's not you. Right. It's <laughs> OK. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> it's, I think I think it's necessary to remember that just to kind of keep things humble and keep yourself in place because it's so easy to go off oh. and oh I'm doing this and it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not really <laughs> yeah like, I guess that's kind of what the uh, like the guru thing is like mm -hmm. there's a lot yeah. of people that want to be gurus like I have the answer I have mm -hmm. everything that you need come to me right. um, yeah so is that what the quantum aspect of the healing is. When, when you refer to quantum healing? Yeah, that, that is a hypnosis method. It's that aspect is that we're working on the most minute, tiniest level, creating huge quantum leaps within mm -hmm. your growth and development and healing, just whatever it is you, you know, is needed there. So, but it's, it's the same thing. It's the practitioner is creating a space, asking questions that allow you to get your own answers because all of the information is coming through you as the client. It's not coming through the practitioner. It's not coming, you know, they're not telling you anything. It's coming through you. So mm -hmm. you are giving yourself the, your answers. And that is a mad. Oh my gosh. That's you want, you want, um, what's the word I'm trying to find? Um, taking your power back. <laughs> okay. That's it. Because then that's what the message is so much now is about take your power back. We've been giving all our power away mm -hmm. by allowing others to tell us what to do, allowing others to be our gurus, be our healers, be our, our advisors, our rule maker, whatever, anything, all of that. It's like, you tell me what to do. I'll just sit here, fix me, fix me, fix me, all of that. And see, it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm, that's not how it works. I will create the space. For you to make contact with your guidance team, you will get your answers. You will tell yourself. And by me helping you do this, then you'll know how to do it yeah. in a conscious level. Yeah. I mean, even on a parallel comparison, anybody who is in business, an entrepreneur, or mm -hmm. just self, self, quote unquote, self-made, always right. needs help from someone. There's always someone else there right. to give you advice, to yes. give you a leg up or what have you. Yeah. I mean, it just mm -hmm. seems to be an intricate part of life if you want to evolve in one capacity or another. 
It is, and that's that's been a huge message recently, um, as always. But really recently, it's like we are all here to help each other. People going, "Why am I here? Why am I here?" Mm -hmm. We're here to help each other, help each other grow, learn, whatever. But we're all on this path. We're just at different places on it, and maybe different um angles of it all the paths lead to the same place we're just taking our own scenic routes some of us so we're here we're here to help each other well if if helping okay bear with me <laughs> if help if helping is the purpose uh -huh. then what's the purpose of helping like what why is that the mm -hmm. thing you know mm -hmm. we were created when are these bodies were created to never be sick always be healthy. They are, they are biological machines. Oh, wow. Okay. And they're created to live for hundreds and hundreds of years and never have any aches, pains, illnesses, anything. Mm -hmm. And they can heal themselves beautifully as long as we don't uh, interfere. Okay. So that is the state that we are naturally. That is our natural. It's not, it's not natural to be sick. It's natural to be healthy. When we are sick mm -hmm. or something is wrong, then it's, then we have to look at what's going on there. It's not a problem with this physical biological machine. It's something that we're not listening. What I found, and that's where soul speak comes from is this is our guidance team is trying to communicate with us. They are communicating all of the time, but we don't usually hear them or we don't believe we can hear them or we don't hear them clearly or we don't follow them. Okay. Like in my case, I didn't follow. I just did what I wanted. So, so you were kind of like, shoo, shoo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. whatever, I'll do it my way. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. You know, we do that. Okay. <laughs> and, and then they have to come in stronger. But it, let's say you don't believe you can hear them because there's a lot of people. It's like, no, I don't hear anything. I don't get messages. I don't nothing. And mm -hmm. so, but they are. They're talking to all of us. Now, it's however you hear them. It may be you hear them or you sense them. You feel them. You know them anything any it's however you receive your information is how it works but let's say you don't believe that you can get information mm -hmm. in that way well if you don't believe it then it's not going to happen you're not it's not going to come through into your experience so if you if they got that you know and they're not uh, this this always messes with me when you shift it i'm sorry oh, uh, <laughs> We can go um, back. There you go. It's just distract. It's it's okay. I'm just let, let, want you to know <laughs> if I go eh, it's because I see myself close up and it's scary. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, so if we are not listening, then and this is their role is to guide us, and 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 we made an agreement before we ever came in. It's like, look, if I I have these things I'm going to I want to accomplish, and I need to be at these spots, you know, at these points. Okay, yeah. So if I'm off course please help me and get me back on course. That's an agreement we made. And that's, and they're like, okay, you, you said do this. And so we're off course. Then they're trying, they're saying, Hey, get over here, get over here, get over here. And we're not listening. We don't believe we can hear them. So we're not listening. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to have to get, make louder messages. And that's where we might get things like car accidents or different accidents, things like that. It's like, those are louder messages is what I call. It's like, there's no accidents. They're just louder messages. And if we still not paying attention to that, then they're going to use the mechanism that you will pay attention to. It's something that you're with 24 hours a day, seven days yeah. a week, the body. That's where, then they start using that and they'll start with aches, pains, because that gets our attention. And we're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Uh, might go to the doctor about it, we might not. But see, the main thing mm -hmm. is it got your attention. It's like, it makes you stop. And if it, and if you don't do anything with it, if you're not hearing it, not paying attention to it, it's mm -hmm. going to get louder and louder and louder in the form of more sickness, more louder, more pain, something. Mm -hmm. If it keeps on, keeps on, it's going to turn into a disease, something, because it's just, it's still trying to talk. It's talking louder and louder and louder. For sure. So, and that's what that is. It's not that that is the natural state. It's just your guidance team is trying to deliver a message to you. Well, then what is illness? Because obviously modern medicine is capable of healing certain mm -hmm. things, right? Yeah. Um, and then that sounds to me like if we are somehow energetically balanced, then we wouldn't get uh, no. illness? Is that what it is? Not. No. If you are balanced and you are on your path and everything is fine, you are fine. You will not, yeah. there's no need for a message. 
See, I've always wanted really to believe that, right? And it's, but it's so hard because we still get the flu or this and that. And uh, we read about yogis, you know, that we're, we're doing this yeah. centuries ago um, or may still be doing it. But eventually the body does age, right? I mean, you can't like stop that. <laughs> it doesn't have to. That Again, that's a belief. You have to look at what what we believe and we've been taught yeah. from before we were ever born that we're going to age and die. Those are the two certainties. We're going to die. You know, all these things happen. And so we're taught this. that's a belief system. Is there no, ex is there no exception? Is there no person that we can look to and go, oh, this person's lived a thousand years or. Yeah. Not now because we all mm -hmm. have the same belief. You know, you, the closest thing would be if you find people in these remote areas that don't have uh, media and things like that, and they, they mm -hmm. can live into their hundreds and, you know, so that's, a, I remember, mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember hearing a report about a Chinese man. I think mm -hmm. they said he was something like 200 and something yeah. years old, but they didn't have mm -hmm. like rec records going far back enough, so they couldn't quite verify it. Mm -hmm. um, but there was enough to indicate that he is pretty old. He was well over yeah. 100. Mm -hmm. um, and I and it does make you wonder. It does make you Absolutely. wonder. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and it seems that people who do live past 100 have a certain sort of mindset. Mm -hmm. Right. Like whenever you see these interviews of people who are turning 104, 107 you know, or whatever it is, they all seem to have a really like calming, mm -hmm. optimistic point of view. Uh, yes. Yes. They're not worried about things. They're not angry about things. They're not, you know, and yeah. that's that's probably a common denominator because those anger and worry, those are things that stress the body. Anger mm -hmm. turns into cancer. That's where cancer comes from. Um, so that's where, you know, yeah, they're probably sitting in a beautiful cloud of positive emotions. And yeah, I mean, I know that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, are you familiar with telomeres? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like a chromosomal, it's a genetic thing okay. where the, the, the telom telomeres um, degrade over time. And it's like a clock, mm -hmm. like a genetic, genetic clock. Mm -hmm. And we just like age over, at a, you know, starting from a certain point. And the shorter and shorter these telomeres uh, get, then you get closer to, you know, death. Mm -hmm. I wonder in, if there's a way to kind of tap into that um, and prevent that from happening, like measurably. Like, could could yeah. we could we measure the slowing rate of those? Mm -hmm. and, I don't know. <laughs> with 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 someone like yourself, you know, doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's, there's probably a lot of people want to do that. They want to test all these different things. It's like, Oh, can we test brain waves and can we test this? It's like, you can tell it just by looking at the person, you know, so you don't need a lot of machines to tell you what you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just that. And I understand that that's just that part of us that wants that proof that wants something. Right. Um, and that's fine. Do you, you do you ever want proof or you do you just, I, I used to, but no, I don't need it. I see it. You know, and, and and when you when you believe when you believe things, then you start seeing them. But if you're waiting to see them before you'll believe them, you'll never see them. Well, I think there's definitely a truth to that for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a vision of something, if you don't believe that that that's not going to come mm -hmm. true, then it's never going to come true. They're just exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I I hope that that one day we can get to the point where you mm -hmm. know science can can measure more of this. I think we're inching towards it. I know like Tyler Henry, the medium, mm -hmm. um, he's had some, you know, uh, brain scans done like while he's working, cool. um, you know, yeah. To, yeah, to, to indicate, mm -hmm. um, activity that seems to be abnormal <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, maybe it will inch away little by little, uh, and, and we'll do this. And, and, you know, there is science, right? There is science. Those well, that's who met what's showing, yeah, that's what's showing people that there's something really happening here. And like I said, yeah, when we have people in right. HHT in a session, you know, mm -hmm. and there, and we had one person that I know of, I think there's some others that have done this. They had a machine that could measure these different waves. And they showed when they were in this part where they're contacting the higher self, mm -hmm. um, and it was a certain brain way. I mean, we, I know we have them in theta, but whatever it was they were monitoring, they were noticing it's like, okay, well they're here and they're only usually there. They'll bop in and out of that. This person was there sustained for 60 minutes. They're like, that's impossible. It can't happen. You, you it yeah. just doesn't happen that way, but they were. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff that it shows you that something's really happening. 
Yeah, I mean, we're always pushing the limits to uh, of our biology, and sure, we have you know, supplements and better ways of of stretching and exercising and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have someone like David Blaine, where who can do these amazing feats of holding your breath for you know however mm -hmm. long, ten plus minutes, and yeah. and over time, I I can't forget the marathon runner. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in the '30s. There was this idea that a, a mile runner could not run the mile in under like was four minutes, 30 seconds or five minutes, something right. like that. Right. And everybody believed this. Mm -hmm. And then I forget, I, gosh, I can't, I can't remember the runner's yeah, name. It was but, that first person. <laughs> but that first person, as soon as he did it, mm -hmm. others shortly yeah. after were oh, able yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. And that, that alone is kind of a proof that the, the power of the yes. mind right there. It's totally and, our belief. And whatever yeah. we believe is what course we're, we'll take. If we mm -hmm. don't believe it can happen, it will never happen. But if we believe it can happen, then it will. And that's why you've got to. It's so important to watch what the brain is thinking because the thoughts create beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to be very careful about what material you allow in there because they're going to formulate your beliefs, right. which create your world. That's where you manifest from. Yeah. How you feed your brain. Mm -hmm. What are you watching? What are you reading? Positive, positive things. Not the, not the things that are telling you all this, you know, negative stuff to believe mm -hmm. uh, and trying to tell you what to believe. Watch the positive things. Look at the stuff that makes you feel good. Right. Um, and I, I would quant qualify that also. Like certain things that are positive isn't just, hey, smile and be happy. Mm -hmm. Something positive is reading a book maybe that helps you understand your your trauma, right? Yeah. Or understanding mm -hmm. relationship with, mm -hmm. with this person, that person. So things right. that are challenging mm -hmm. um, or deconstructive to help your psychology can is I, I consider a positive thing yeah. um, as opposed to TikTok, you know, we're just like scrolling, you know. No, that's a, that's yeah. a really good distinction. Yeah. But just make sure, just be careful. It's like you, you be mindful of what's mm -hmm. going in because exactly. whatever's yeah. going in, you're creating thoughts with it, which are creating beliefs. Right. And then that's yeah. creating your world. So just, you know, if you're watching a lot of, you know, hate and, and drama and, you know, high, all this voltage stuff and, and violence, mm -hmm then that's creating thoughts in here. And then that's creating beliefs about your world, which are going to then create. Uh, yeah, I will, a good example of this for me, this was years ago, years ago. Um, I, I had just started listening to Alex Jones a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I've since I don't listen to Alex Jones, haven't for years. I have issues with him. Uh, I'll leave it at that. But for that that period, that short period, I started listening to him regularly. Mm -hmm. I literally, and this happened to a friend of mine too, I started feeling off. Mm -hmm. Like I started feeling kind of like just like anxious and, and nauseous. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. I was like, this is not good for my soul. Like mm -hmm. this is so, so toxic. So you know I, this was like 15 know, years ago. It. Yeah, and that's that was wonderful. That's very... Mm -hmm. um in tune you were with yourself to listen because your body will tell you that's see that's what that the body's a messenger right. and that's where right. illness comes from it's trying to tell you you're out of alignment things aren't right you're off course mm -hmm. and that's what your body was saying uh-uh uh-uh right. exactly, exactly yeah <laughs> yeah well you know we're at the at the end julia thank you so oh much for, for being with me i know it's so wonderful to have you mm -hmm. on um for this last show of the season as we said and so i just cool. want to Wish you a Merry Christmas and everyone out there a Merry Christmas. Merry happy Christmas. Yule. Happy Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah now. Mm -hmm. And um, happy Kwanzaa coming up soon as well. And if you could leave us with, you know, just mm -hmm. a, a thought, what would that be? You are the creator of your world. So, you know, we, gosh, how do I say this? We want a Merry Christmas for everyone and we want love throughout the world. We want our worlds to be loving. Love yourself. We start there. Everything starts right here with yourself. Love yourself. Treat yourself good. <laughs> <laughs> and that in turn ripples out. And you will be amazed at how your world will start changing. So okay. beautiful world, everyone. Thank you, Julia. And everyone check out Julia's work at juliacannon.com. All right. Thank you all again for joining us for this final episode. And I will see you all in 2024. As always, uh, peace and love. And of course, live in the mystery. Mm -hmm.